because I, I speak Cree, I was raised by my Cree father, but I also I went to art school in Sweden. My, I lived with my maternal grandmother and learned how to speak Swedish. It was like an archaic dialect that they spoke when they immigrated. So when I went to art school there, they would kind of look at me because I was, I was a guy who looked like he was Persian, talking like hillbilly Swedish. <laughs> so they're like, what's going on here? <laughs> so it was kind of funny. It took me about two weeks to get into the groove of the modern Swedish. But for, uh, as an example, Gautamer taught here in the 70s at McMaster. I don't know how long. I just remember coming across it, 72 somewhere around there, 75. Now, a lot of what Gautamer says in Truth and Method is not unlike what some of the old Cree storytellers talk about. You know, your positionality of understanding is embedded and embodied. As it's historical. That's what a lot of the old Cree storytellers talk about. A story or interpretation is never completed. That's what a lot of the old Cree storytellers talk about. So in my work, I don't see a dichotomy. I know it's trendy among some people, but then again, like I'm a bi like at least you know, bicultural, but then there's an English underlay of, of everything. So I, I, I think that translation of ideas and information systems is possible. Otherwise, my whole life would be a lie, basically, right? Because, I mean, I, my I am from two different cultures, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that indigenous, first thing is indigenous knowledge is not categorically different from other modes of knowing. I don't, I don't think personally, because I've, you know, traveled around, I understand, and uh, speak other languages as well. And I think that indigenous knowledge is characterized by how we relate to one another. You know, some of the stories that I've gathered and so on have taken years, so I think that's that's a key part of it. That's not unlike people doing other forms of research, right? I don't think it's... Um, another thing is, I don't think indi indigenous knowledge is necessarily measured by your blood quantum or anything such as this. Let me give you an example. One of my friends, Eric Wolvengray, he published the two-volume uh, set of the Cree Dictionary, like Plains Cree. He's not like Cree by birth or anything, but he's the finest editor of written Cree that there is. So that's, so I, I'm, I think it's, it's important to have like a, a national consciousness as an indigenous person, but I think if it's too, if the boundaries of that consciousness are too rigid, then it will it will dry up in a sense. It will it will be limited because all of those interesting connections I think are part of indigenous knowledge. I think indigenous knowledge is also things that I don't know anything about really. Hunt. Oh, I know how to load a gun and all that, but I don't know how to hunt. Like obviously, there's a lot of knowledge that was embedded in those ways of life. Mm -hmm. You know, like I lived on moose meat till I was five, but I don't know how to hunt. And you see, in Cree culture, you're not a man until you actually kill a moose and then you're supposed to have a feet well, I've never done that so mm. I'll just I'll live amongst the whites for a while and <laughs> pretend I'm a man <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> but uh, I think indigenous knowledge is also say embedded in in ceremonies myself I tend to follow my father's beliefs I don't think public institutions are a place for that myself I think that's kind of your own personal path to follow like at Trent, we make some of that available, but I would never want it to be mandatory, like if it's available for students, right? Because I think you have to follow your own conscious 